Hi, everybody. This is Justice. And today I have Michael Clarida with me. And, and he is a wonderful artist. He does a lot of work in children's books. What other kind of work do you do? Well, I'm primarily a product designer. Um, so currently I design toys, um, soft lines, hard lines, uh, collectibles for Universal Studios, Warner Brothers Entertainment, Marvel Entertainment, um, and just about everything in between. All right. That's really cool. Yeah, I, I looked at your Instagram um, just shortly before this, and, and we've been talking for uh, a, a bit, and your artwork up there is really great. It has so much expression and so much life to it. it really, it's like one of those art styles where you look at it and it just kind of makes you smile and very <laughs> talented right, artist. You. Excellent. That's my That is my goal. To make people smile and to maybe make some money in between. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, in that order. I think that's a very good perspective and balance to have. So Michael and I were talking uh, before this and we were talking about uh, learning his workflow. I, uh, everybody has a different way of doing things that works for them. And I've been trying as uh, I, I consider myself a um, very much a beginning artist as far as it goes to workflow. Like I can, I can, I can draw, but I don't have a, uh, an established workflow. So every single time I do that, it's a new learning experience probably takes four or five times longer than I think it should. And one out of three, uh, drawings or paintings that I do turns into anything that I, uh, want to show anybody. So <laughs> <laughs> totally uh, understandable. <laughs> yeah. So now you're using Photoshop and you're on a Mac mm -hmm. um, and that will transfer perfectly to anyone using Windows. I don't think there's going to be a lot of uh, differences between no. your workflow process on one or two. You, and you have both. Yes, I use I utilize both uh, OSs as well as uh, the OS on an iPad. So I'm very familiar with the different ecosystems. Got it. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Do you want to lay the groundwork for us? Yeah, so basically I have been, <laughs> you talk about, you know, we talked about workflow and workflow basically is kind of dictated to you by the need at that point in time. So if yeah. a, a client will come to me with an extreme short deadline, my workflow will change and morph into something a little bit more efficient. But if I have a longer timeline, then I'll have a little bit more freedom to explore just like you do explore different avenues and come up with a better solution to the quote unquote challenge. I don't, I don't call them problems. I call them challenges. So what you see on the screen basically is uh, an existing sketch. This is a thumbnail that I did in sketchbook pro. I utilize sketchbook pro uh, made by, I believe uh, alias uh, wayfront. Um, it's a sketching program that is just literally utilized for sketching works in layers. And then I'll translate over to whatever other program, at that particular point in time works for my particular job. So this one, I wanted to, um, you know, do a little bit more with the background. So you look at the illustration or the sketch that you see on the screen and you see the background element, and then we have a mid-ground element, which are the trees on the left and the right-hand side, which would be these elements right here. Then you have this character right here and you have these uh, particular elements. So I think in terms of layers, um, okay. I'm also a photography uh, teacher, and I, te I, I think in terms of focal point, where your eye is going to be led in the illustration. And Photoshop, uh, Sketchbook Pro, uh, Clip Studio Paint, uh, just about any of the higher end uh, illustration programs work in layers. And as soon as you realize that the layers are your friend, then you can start really exploring that focal point and looking through the illustration. So. This is a sketch and I've brought it into uh, Photoshop and it's on one single layer. So when I do this, uh, I will still, you know, if I were to launch Sketchbook Pro and show you the original file, it's in layers and I've blurred out the background and I'm thinking mm. how I'm going to lead the eye. And I'm right. always wanting to develop the illustration. So it's a very organic process for me. I'll start out thumbnails. I'll move into a tighter sketch. Um, and just because whenever I used to work in the studio, um, I don't have an endless amount of time. So a lot of times the original sketch that I have will be what I want to translate over to the final illustration. Yeah, you're not restarting every time. 
Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing, you know, I'll have my small thumbs and they're really quick. We're talking three to five simple thoughts. And I think in terms of simple shapes. So whenever I start like a sketch, I'll think, you know, if I maybe go ahead here too. So if you can see that, I'll think yeah. in terms of shape. So if I want the main subject to be here, I'll draw it as a large shape. And then I'll have everything else come around and frame that particular element. And the background elements will be secondary. So you'll move in from the roll right all the way to where they're going. So that's kind of my process in terms of how I develop the illustration. Now, once I get into the sketch phase, it's a lot of fun, <laughs> right? Yeah. You're, you're, you're exploring, you're looking at reference, you're you know, thinking in terms of lighting. So a lot of those things come in early on for me, mm -hmm. at least, because I have a vision, that mind's eye of how I'm going to develop the piece of artwork. So once I get this particular stage in, I'll drag it into Photoshop and I'll put it on a, a transparent layer. And I'll start going in and really developing the line work. So you see a lot of these elements, if I expand this layer, okay. these layers here, I'm getting a little bit of lag. So you see, I've gone in and I'll work from the back forward, just like a painter would. So I'm a traditionalist. I, I graduated mm -hmm. from Ringling College of Art and Design uh, with a degree in illustration. And I was uh, trained in, in traditional method, methodologies in painting and illustration, graphic design um, and animation. Uh, I took animation as well. So working from the back forward gives me the opportunity to adjust and uh, gauge focal length and where I want your eye to go. So I'll work from the back. So if I want to blur this, I still have it on a layer way back right. here in the back to push that back. And you can see that in some of the illustrations um, that I have on my website. But you know, then once I get the line work in, I'll block in simple color. You can see that it's very rough. And I love texture yeah. in my drawings because for me, it gives a hand on quality to it. I've seen really painterly stuff and I think that's great, but it's very symbolic of where that, the, that gamer look, right? And I think that's great. Mm -hmm. And I have done a lot of images like that. I like that childlike feel and that, that texture quality to the illustrations. So then I put the line work or the color in, and then I'll just start working in and bringing in different elements to really, again, pop. Uh, you see these are a little bit crisper than some of the elements in the foreground. I'll end up blurring right. these. But yeah. this, the illustration you're looking at actually is for XP Pen. <laughs> they, okay. um, yeah, they, they, you know, have a big contest going on right now. And, and, and this is for them. So you get to see kind of a preview. And then what happens is, is I'll start developing. So this layer group right here, as you see on the right hand side, is above that background. So what will end right. up happening is, I'll I'll put lighting effects on this layer and it and it literally is stacked on top of each other. And then finally the the main subject matter is in the front. And then I'll have these elements again in the foreground. And then I'll end up matting it in some capacity. So in terms of workflow, just think of it in term it, it is literally, you know, a layer sandwich. And I've I came from apparel, so apparel is one of those things where you have the client that wants to change their mind all the time. <laughs> so yeah. I keep everything adjustable and the only time I will flatten everything is if it goes to a printer um, or, uh, you know, if I print it out or something like that. Um, for a uh, client. Do you, do you restrict yourself to a certain number of layers? Like you start getting too high and you're like, okay, that's, that's getting daunting. Or do you have a structure? I've had, I've had files with over 400 layers uh, before <laughs> and that sounds terrible, but layer management. Yeah. Layer management yeah. is one of those ideologies, especially you need to learn early on in your career, because especially if you work in a layered format like I do, mm -hmm. because you can get lost. And oh, yeah. I do have I do have my Photoshop set up to where I can go to my selection tool and I basically you see how I can click. I'm clicking the command or control key and it, mm -hmm. you can see over here on the right hand side. So I don't really have an issue. And then it goes down here so I right. can go and I can select layers as I need to really quickly, you know, here, and, yeah, it, and it does it for me. So over here on the left-hand side, auto select layer, I have that off, actually on whenever I press my controller command key. So it auto selects and I can go through. So I don't get too oh, long. Okay. 
Yeah. So yeah. control control turns on auto select. Right. Right. See how I, I in the, on a Mac it's a command. Okay. But in in the I believe on the PC it's control. So I click that. You can hear it in the background. I click that, and my selection tool still stays, or the move tool still stays the same. But I can go in, and you see on the right hand side, I can yeah. select things and go really quick. Got it. Yeah, you can get kind of hung up if you've got a bunch of layered transparencies or or one of those things, and and sometimes it becomes an issue. I've only been lost a few times. I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's, it doesn't work against me too bad. Yeah, uh, we were both lost uh, trying to set this meeting up. Technology, <laughs> it's an yeah. ever evolving entity that sometimes we get. Yeah, we get lost. <laughs> so Definitely. When, uh, Michael and I were just talking about how mm. when you're creating art, if you're spending 20, 30 hours on a piece, it, it tends to lose a lot of its personality. It tends to be become kind of plastic and and static, and it loses its motion and its a lot of its its feel because we've over rendered things. And it's you were you were talking about the importance of keeping things unique. Yeah, I think early on, one of the big mistakes that I made, and you know, we'll progress into the three big mistakes that I made and, and warning people not to make them is putting a lot of pressure on myself to find my style, right? I mean, in, in school, that was one of the big things that I think were pushed. You need to find your style, find your style. And right. then once you find your style, you lock into it and then you have a workflow you know, I do this X, Y, and Z, and that's what kind of defines the way you, your style looks. Well, in, in in my career, I've actually gone the opposite direction. <laughs> I've tried so many different things and so many different programs that it's developed my style by itself over time. And, you know, my style doesn't look like a lot of the gaming stuff out there that is, you know, like I said, very similar. I mean, if you look, if you put two five artist pieces next to each other that are very similar game one you know the game style very rendered and, and you know many hours on it you can't really look at them and say oh this is so and so this is so and so but uh, as far as spending a lot of time on a piece and really getting the, getting in there i i don't do that anymore um probably because i need to make money you know you spend 30 yeah. hours on a piece and you're only making a thousand bucks for it and suddenly you look at it and it doesn't make a lot of sense right um yeah. and you know early on in my career i put a lot of pressure on myself to find that style but now i literally I, I try so many different things and so many different um possibilities uh, also because you know what i do is i i emulate i i'm a i'm sort of a chameleon you know I, mm -hmm. I have my own drawing style but then i switch into that mode where i can draw you know harry potter i can draw disney i can draw pixar i can draw all those characters and it really diversifies your eye and how you right. you look at things and and through that process you develop the way you do things and that ultimately at the end of the day becomes your style and how unique you are right yeah. and my diversification right. has been an asset and hasn't been something that has hurt me right i can do a lot of things yeah. you know from 3d work i do 3d sculpting and zbrush i do traditional digital illustration traditional art graphic design logos mm. i mean you know even traditional art on art you know on canvas so yeah that, that's a big deal I think that when you have a massive following on uh, any platform, then you can have a very, very uh, narrowed in uh, <laughs> a niche. Style. Yeah, yeah, you can be yeah. in that tiny, tiny little niche, and and there's so many. Well, I mean that niche style, like you very, very specific style, and you have enough audience that you can make an income for it. But from it you can make an income from it but like you're saying it's like if you can do all these different things because i think a true artist can use different tools yeah to develop different styles of artwork because you use a different program and do the exact same work you're, it's going to look different and so knowing hey this type of artwork i use this process i use this tool and then you can create something without really changing how you think about art you're just changing kind of the steps you you go through or and, and that part stays stays foundational. Yeah, the artistic tool belt is something I teach uh, whenever I you know I, te I teach K through twelve, and have done so since twenty fourteen. And I had the opportunity to be an adjunct professor um, at the college uh, here in uh, northern Georgia, and I told him I said your artistic tool belt is always in development. You're always adding things uh, to it, 
you know, and developing mm -hmm. things as you progress to, if you know, make things efficient. Now, if you're making things for money, then that's a little bit different than it would be if you're making things for fun. And that's another mistake yeah. that I made. So this is number two. I, <laughs> early on, classified my art as a money resource, as a money source. And I started mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. only do that. Whereas it, it became uh, a job and, and ultimately after 10 years of being at the job that I was at, it was a J-O-B. I went and I worked and I left and that was it. And I found that I needed a passion. So you right. really need to develop that passion of who you are and identity as an artist and continue mm -hmm. that, you know, continuing education, uh, continuing exploring and finding yeah. out uh, who you are as an artist and not just sticking in, you know, everybody wants to work as an artist and make money. I'm going to be a millionaire, but that's not really <laughs> what it should be. You should not yeah. do art for yeah. that because at the end of the day, it will, it will hurt your artistic endeavors. And when I worked at Disney uh, in house and I talked to one of their artists and I said, he asked me, he said, you still draw? He asked me, you still draw outside of work? And I said, absolutely, <laughs> all the time. Yeah. And he said, yeah, I don't do that. And I thought, right. how, why? Because he had literally classified it as a J-O-B. And that that was, mm. you know, something that I'd made a mistake of and ended up having to transfer over back to my passion. It's like finding your passion as, as an artist is, is one of the most key things that you really need to do. Um, you can make money at it. That's great. But always latch onto that passion. Um, and never, never let hold of it. So I did um, gymnastics for almost two decades. And I remember uh, training with athletes, uh, world-class athletes, Olympians. And, and you, know, you have people who they have this mindset like, well, I have to work. Like I have to work, 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 work. It has to be consistent and structured. And, and you know, I, you have to do all these different things that you don't like to do. And, and uh, while a lot of that is true, you're not going to hit your potential if you don't like what you do because you're just going to eventually burn out. Really yeah, and down. it happens more often than you realize. And then it happens when you don't realize it's happening. And then you okay. look around, you're like, why am I so tired all the time? Why do I do this? Why do I do that? It, yeah. it, becomes, a, it becomes an issue. And you know, a lot of artists, especially those that work for money in, in, in the animation industry, you see this a lot in there they'll get into their dream job and it's, it's not a green grass on the other side situation. It right. is literally, they get over there and they think that, that, and they try to talk themselves into the fact that they're sacrificing one aspect of their life for the other. And that's number three. <laughs> number three issue that I had early on was I believed and identified with uh, that job as an artist, as who I was. And uh, yeah. the reality, yeah. the reality is, is, and I tell this people going into business and I tell this people going into art, especially from yeah. art school into the mm -hmm. world, I say that there's a balance, you know, yeah, and if you don't understand there's a balance, mm -hmm. then it will cost you. It will cost you your health, your life, your family, your relationships, because mm -hmm. especially as a freelancer, um, that freelance monster i call it a freelance monster it yeah. will eat your it'll eat your lunch because it's the fear of not getting the next job and then right. suddenly you find yourself either being too overloaded and then you mm -hmm. can't focus or have family time or you're stressing about getting the job done and it affects your artwork and your passion so it is literally it is a push and pull and a balance situation i'm, I'm constantly yeah. stopping my art to go and and have some time with my kids, my wife. And even yeah. if you don't have that, you need to find something else that takes you away because that actually benefits your artwork in the long run. So that yeah, finding that so balance. True. So yeah. true. Balance I, is big. Yeah, I work from home. I'm assuming you work yes. from home a good portion of the time at very least. Oh, so all the time. I'm a, I'm a full-time yeah. uh, illustrator uh, at home out of my studio. I worked at the studio for over 10 years. And mm -hmm. previous to that, I was a graphic artist for Foot Locker, but uh, I worked at a studio in Orlando um, for mm -hmm. 10 years uh, doing a product that's design and illustration uh, for Disney, Universal, and Warner. And that after that 10 years, I found my passion. Disney hired me, um, and I worked for them for two years in-house. And after that, uh, I moved up to – actually, I moved up into the mountains of North Georgia onto a farm 
and uh, I freelance uh, out of my studio and been doing so since 2017. I think that's awesome. I think that's a dream for a lot of artists. Yeah, Ooh. and <laughs> it's it's it hasn't been easy, but that finding that balance and finding your passion, um, you know, all the stuff, almost mm -hmm. everything that you saw on Instagram is passion. None of it is work. Yeah, none of it is my work, my professional work. <laughs> if I do show any professional work, it'll be a finished product. And because I'm okay. I'm under such strict NDAs, I can't show a lot of the stuff that I do. Mm -hmm. Only until it's finished and into the into the store, and even then, a lot of the studios don't want you saying you did their stuff because they want it. They want the magic, right? Yeah, it yeah. I identify. <laughs> you know, yeah. it came from this universe, and it it's it's been challenging because there are days when you know I always say you need to give at least twenty minutes to yourself every day, and that involves study, that involves watching a, a tutorial, that involves sketching, drawing finding that avenue that that benefits you and and you'll yeah. because everybody's tugging on you you know this justice everybody's tugging on you for mm -hmm. everything all the time and yeah. you need to give yourself 20 minutes or at least start at 20 minutes and then you move on from there yeah i find when i'm working at home some days i'm distracted i'm unfocused my head's cloudy uh, i'm unmotivated almost every single one of those uh feelings you can fill with a tutorial and go okay <laughs> like i'm gonna watch a tutorial on some artwork i like or something i'm interested in and you're just spending yeah. 20 minutes 30 minutes learning something new and even if it's not something you use you can learn from how they present or some aspect yeah just being it's, in the habit of it it's investment yeah right investment versus return i talk about that and you know people playing games and i'm not knocking on anybody playing games because if you get a return from it that benefits yeah. you in some capacity then great but me i i invest in in like you said tutorials education even going out for a bike ride because uh, i'm a mountain biker as well that yeah. health return that really benefits me you know yeah. the older i get the more i realize the investment versus return because you can invest in something that has a negative return mm -hmm. and at the end of the day those things will work against you but yeah that's another little tidbit investment versus return I'm really, really big on stuff like that. So yeah, I don't want to waste my time. That's all I got. That is my only, that's my life <laughs> currency, yeah. right? Yeah. Life currency. You spend it and if you get a return, great. But, you know, sometimes you spend your life currency and you don't get anything back, right? So right. that's kind of where I'm at in my life. Yeah, yeah. I, there's, um, so we, we were talking about this right before we started recording and my workflow, I wake up around five in the morning uh, and go to bed usually shortly after it gets dark and I work yep. from like 5 30 till 12 or 1 and then uh, I'm done I don't do work after that because what I've learned is I have certain uh, things that I can do when I have certain amounts of focus so if I'm trying to be creative and my brain is foggy it's nothing's gonna I'm gonna get like five percent per hour yeah it's a window it is a window of creativity yeah. So going, okay, at, at six hours, at five hours, at eight hours, I can feel, and this is, it can be fluid and you go, I can feel it. I'm, I'm done today. Yeah. And instead of trying to check the box, I'm a productive person. I work for eight hours. I work for 10 hours. I love my family because I did 12 hours of work today. Turn it off. Yeah. It, 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 it takes, it's a skill. You have to learn how to do it, but you go, okay, I'm yeah. done there's no more work today i can take a note about work i need to do tomorrow otherwise i'm going outdoors i'm yep. i'm cooking i'm doing and some other creative thing is fine just yeah work is done because the creative side of you it yearns to to learn more and to produce but mm -hmm. you know if there's a money quotient involved then you have what's called driving it pushes you and eventually, you know, I've talked to many artists and illustrators and designers and creators that have burnt themselves out. And the thing is, is you're doing that for a return because you want to get ahead. But the problem is, is you'll never get ahead, right? Right. There's oh, I'm, old, I'm ahead for two days and then I'm behind for three days. And, and it yeah. just doesn't work that way. And at the end of the day, I, I remember my mom, because my mom passed away in 2012, you know, that mm -hmm. life happens. And she, she told me, she said, uh, you know, there isn't a moment in my life, you know, now that I'm coming to the end of life that I thought, man, I just want to go to work another day. Right. She's like, I want to go spend time with the people I love. 
And that it's so funny because, you know, I looked at her at the time and I was young, younger. And I thought, well, yeah, but you got to make money. But the thing is, is do we really need all that stuff? Not really. And, and yeah. you know, it, it's just one of those deals where it's maturity, you know, and younger mm -hmm. people, they will drive themselves into the ground and not produce their best work, you know. So yeah. that's kind of where I'm at now. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, yeah, I'm going to go out. I'm going to go out and mow the yard. I'm going to go ride my bike. I'm going to go have fun with my kids. And yeah. then I'll balance it with work. But work is is not is not one of those things that I'm stressing over um, anymore in my yeah. life. And thank goodness that I have the people that hire me to do stuff and yeah, I make but... a decent living at it. But, you know, I was there. I was in the studio. I saw, you know, the deadlines and, you know, in the big wigs. I saw it, you know, in Warner. I saw it. In, in Universal, I saw it in Disney, I saw it, mm -hmm. all those, that impractical deadline quotient, that, 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 that moving variable that always changes and, and art is subjective. So it's a commodity that is, that is, uh, you know, dictated by somebody else's pocketbook and right. it's hard. It's, it's hard. A lot of people can't handle it, you know? So. Yeah, it is. Um, it's, it, it's a, complex process with a lot of moving wheels and if you try and sprint, <laughs> sprint your way through it you're just not going to ever be as good as you could if you if you develop good practices uh, some yeah. good structure and healthy habits and it's, it's not something that you can just go as fast as you can and then oh, i'm perfect now at art you're not perfect. no 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 <laughs> that no 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 and to see and to go back to a comment you made before you know we got on tape or on a video yeah it sees how it shows you how old i am um you said you know spending x amount of time and then getting something done and then making it you know not to your liking or quote unquote perfect and then being embarrassed whenever you show it you know i had so many students that went through that process and i eventually said you know you do realize you're learning right? Mm -hmm. That is a process that takes time and you'll find your path. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, being, you know, that fourth, uh, you know, I know you said three mistakes, but the fourth one being putting too much pressure on yourself to get things perfect. Um, yes. you know, a quote yes. from Jake Parker, who is, uh, one of the founding members of SBS learn uh, online, he said, um, finished, not perfect. And that's yeah. kind of a yeah. moniker for my career finish not perfect there are so many things i look at pieces of artwork i've done that i want to go further and mm -hmm. maybe eventually i will but if it has to do with money you do it to the point where the client accepts it and and it's the best effort at that moment right finish not perfect right. yeah. and man uh, it's been great uh, having that in my brain <laughs> because i yeah. definitely want things perfect but i'm like you know what it's it's part of making it look individual and art is not perfect art is a expression yeah. <laughs> you know so, um as a as a gymnast for a long time uh, i worked with many many athletes who had this idea like well no i'm a perfectionist so i just do it until well I, i'm sorry there is a window like if you're cooking you're like well i'm a perfectionist so i'm going to cook this steak for 30 hours um there might be some downsides to taking a longer time yeah but iteration is king when it comes to artwork you know, if you, if you spend 30 hours on a single, uh, element and then you go back, you're not going to be better than if you did 200 versions, thumbnails, yeah. um, yeah. you know, or, or lower resolution, less detail, you do a hundred versions or 30 versions or five versions, and then add in the detail, you're going to find a better, uh, composed piece with the elements that you like better and the places that you like them more, which is uh, why you were, I think saying that you do a number of thumbnail sketches. Yeah. Typically I'll do two to three, but a lot of times I, I, I go in my brain and I'll think about compositions and what I'm trying to do. And especially with product design, I have to think of more than just my idea. I have to think of the user. I have to think mm -hmm. of the user's experience. I have to think of where all of those people are coming from. I have to think of different cultures of where they're coming from. And then you have right. that relationship component to, let's say you're doing something for Harry Potter. Each one has a different relationship to the film. So then you mm -hmm. have to develop an idea or a product that speaks to that person uh, individually. And it's a challenge. You know, product design is, is, is one of those fun 
entities that that really challenges you as an artist uh, and also creator to come up with something that is basically a, a relationship you know it's it's they get that right they buy that yeah. mickey mouse because they have a relationship with the character and right. yeah, yeah i mean artwork again like i said is subjective and everybody looks at it different um and training you know training somebody to do that a lot of times is challenging because you know you can look at their artwork and you don't necessarily want to judge but is there a right way and a wrong way to do art and that's <laughs> that's one of those things where you can say probably not because yeah. there's a lot of crap out there but that's from yeah. my viewpoint that subjective viewpoint and right. you know i always tell students i say foundationally speaking the principles uh and the elements of art you get those inside of you and you can twist and turn i mean look at picasso yeah. he started out as a traditional artist looking you know looking at the world through the world's eyes and then he decided to change things and put right. the art world on its head by manipulating those art and principles. And he came out with a new style that nobody had seen before. So, yeah, it is. <laughs> art is, is interesting, uh, to say the least. You know, daunting, of course. Challenging, right. yes. And especially in this new world of digital art, you know, and all the peripherals and components that are involved in learning those tools, you know, adding those to your tool mm. belt. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes I just want to sit down and draw with a pencil. And I do, as you can see behind yeah. me. And I love doing that because it's very yeah. baseline, you know, and it speaks right. to me. Yeah, cathartic as well. So, Michael, there's uh, in in a follow up video. Mm -hmm. I would I would love to actually have you walk me through some Blender basics, because as a as a primary as a primarily two uh, D artist, uh, I've tried to pick up Blender and ZBrush, and it just well, I. I'm learning, I'm learning Blender, but ZBrush, I'm pretty fluent with. Mm -hmm. And just so you understand the overview of why I got into 3D art, it was out of necessity. Right. Because me first going into it, the, the vernacular and understanding the principles behind 3D art were daunting. Mm -hmm. Understanding, you know, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to sit down and, and go through because everybody has a different way of doing things. And yeah. my way of doing things in ZBrush is a little bit rudimentary, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I am currently learning Blender. And again, that toolbox, adding that to the toolbox. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, it would be, but, I, like I've, I've done tutorials before and it's, everybody has something different that they're trying to oh, yeah. figure out how to do. And different complexity levels. Yeah. And, and they speak and they're t telling you these phrases and you have, I'm like, I have no idea what that is. What is, yeah. what is a, you know, a vertice? What is a vertex? What is you know, yeah. what is all that? What is a mesh? You know, you, it's, it's a model, but it's a mesh, but it's a tool. It's all three things. So these yeah. are things that you get in. And I started with ZBrush and it was hard. It's, it oh was my the hardest gosh. program I've tried to learn and I keep forgetting. So if we, if we <laughs> do a video like that, I think it'd be fun to have a conversation back and forth. Well, how do I do this? And then you're explaining how to do one part and like, well, how do I add another um, piece? Uh, hold on. I get 10 minutes left. Um, yeah. The thing is with, with 3D is we live in a three-dimensional world, so we relate to it better. So a lot of times you'll see artists that actually transition into 3D first, and they're much better at it, and they never learn to draw. And right, because yeah. what happens with drawing, you look at something in 3D, it goes through your machine and your brain and out your arm to translate onto a 2D surface to look three-dimensional. So you have mm -hmm. a, a disconnect there. But a lot of right. times they'll go right to 3D and be really good at it, but can't draw their way out of a box. So yeah. it kind of makes you think we are designed 3D. Why can't I get this better? But mm -hmm. again, it has to do with that tool, that that yeah. program that actually acts as an obstacle. And and that, you know, I think we talked about, you know, with re regards to some of the things that uh, you do in your business, you know, the user interface and you have to predict mm -hmm. how they're going to react to that user interface with your program. And a lot right. of times my train of thought as an artist is only to just get through your program and onto the art. See, I'm getting, I'm right. trying to get through your program. And if there's <laughs> obstacles, yeah. then it makes me not want to use it anymore. So yeah. it's it's been, you know, with different programs, of course, Photoshop and Illustrator and ZBrush, those are all mm. obstacles to the art and you have to learn how to get through them. Yeah, I think that's what Procreate has done such a great job of doing is they've removed a lot of the obstacles. They've made that's it right. quite simple. Yeah. Art Rage uh, has done a really good job with that. Now, um, Michael, if, if someone wants to find out uh, more about you, I know you have a YouTube channel, which is mm -hmm. where I found you. 
uh, do recommend, and we'll put the link to your YouTube channel uh, here. Uh, I'll pin a comment, and then if you can comment you. on it, they can okay. either click on your your comment icon or avatar or, or the link that we put there. Okay. Um, where else can they find your work? The best thing to do is to Google my name, Michael Clarida, C-L-A-R-I-D-A. And if you Google it, then it's going to pull up the first, first and second pages of the search engine. It'll pull up everything from, you know, ArtStation to mm -hmm. Instagram to Twitter to YouTube to CoreFlow, which is my website. Or not website. Well, it is my portfolio website, but CoreFlow.com uh, mm -hmm. forward slash mclarida. But all those, if you just Google my name, it'll all come up. I've worked pretty hard <laughs> in posting over the past six years to really get that engine to steer towards me and not, right. you know, some Joe Schmo. But yeah, just Google my name and that should be good. Okay, got it. Well, uh, hopefully we'll have some more videos with Michael coming up soon. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us today and I'll look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thank you, Michael. Okay, thank you, Justice. Appreciate it. Bye.